You're listening to Teach Me the Bible podcast, where we unpack the meaning of books, passages, and themes from Scripture. Join us each week as Dr. David Klingler walks us through God's Word and teaches the Bible. Each episode has a study guide available in the show notes. This is Teach Me the Bible podcast. Hey everybody, welcome back to Teach Me the Bible podcast. Uh, Today we are continuing on in our series in Genesis. And so uh, we have made it all the way through chapter five. And, and we're last week, we did part of four, the end of four in chapter five. And today, uh, we're going to do chapter six and a little bit of chapter seven as well. And so uh, we're trying to include a little bit more in there just to make really emphasize the point that they're not meant to be chopped up into right. chapters necessarily, right? The original story didn't have chapters and verses, and and so uh, we want to we want to really emphasize this is one story continuing all the way uh, through here. But we've been looking at uh, these two developing groups: the seed of the woman and the seed of the serpent. And uh, we've been focusing on uh, the line of Seth in chapter five, and so we're going to pick up and see what happens to them in chapter six. Yeah, so. yeah. So we so we pick it up in in. Chapter six, verse one, which is really a continuation of chapter five. We, um, you know, you look at this, and and we, you know, there's different ways that the Hebrew tells the story. There's narrative mm-hmm. construction, uh, and and one of the ways is the narrator just continues to tell the story, and and that's the construction here. Uh, and so it's continuing right in from chapter five, continues in chapter six, and really goes all the way through chapter six, and and so we'll we'll. Uh, We'll make that point, but one of the things that that, we, that needs to be stated right here, and of course, chapter six, there's this big debate about who are the sons of God, mm-hmm. um, and so we pick it up in six one. Uh, it happened, or and it, it, it came to pass, or something like that, that men began to multiply on the face of the land, face of the Adama. Um, that is exactly what's happening in chapter five, right? Adam is, uh, you know, the word here for the man or or men begin to multiply. Actually, it came about when Ha Adam, mm-hmm. uh, the man, began to multiply on the face of the the land, and and this is what the story is: that Adam had his wife Eve. They had other sons and daughters, and other sons and daughters, and other sons and daughters, and it tracks this one line, mm-hmm. this one um, genealogy, all the way down to Lamech and then to Noah, mm-hmm. and this story. Uh, is about Noah. Chapter six is about Noah. So you can't, you know, say, well, chapter five has nothing to do with chapter six. Right. Even even the storyline, the, the genealogy is getting you to Noah mm-hmm. so that the, the narrator can tell you about about Noah. Right. Second thing I would point out is that it says, and daughters, now daughters were born to them or begotten to them. Uh, and the sons of God saw that the daughters of men were tov. And they took to themselves wives, whomever they chose. This isn't just about procreating with angels. This is about taking nashim, taking wives. The word there for wives is nashim. And we've been introduced to that word all the way back uh, in uh, with Lamech. Lamech on Cain's side, this is in chapter 4, verse 19. Lamech took to himself two nashim, two wives. Uh, and so the story is kind of setting up the two sides. This is what the Lord said to do. This is the instruction. This is what's good and right in the eyes of the Lord. Be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, and do it. One man, one woman, one flesh. Right. And what's been going on in the genealogy of Cain is that his sons are doing the opposite. They're mm. not being fruitful and multiplying image bearers. They, they're being fruitful and multiplying, but they're multiplying people who are doing what's good and right in their own eyes, mm. making a name for themselves, building a city, taking uh, taking multiple wives, basically violating everything that has been stated by the Lord right. uh, as being good and right in the eyes of the Lord. The continuing problem throughout this story is that there's two sides, uh, and Satan's side, the serpent's side, is always trying to entice the other side to come on and join, just like with Cain and Abel, mm-hmm. that, that Satan deceived Cain, right? Satan deceived the woman, Right. Um, and that and, goes back to, you know, that 4-7 verse that we talked about, you yep. know, the desire of the woman versus the desire of the serpent. The serpent yep. wants to to steal the sons yep. and get them on his side. And, yeah. and, and that's exactly what's happening here. Mm-hmm. Intermarriage is going to be forbidden. 
with the nations. And mm-hmm. so what, what's going to happen here? Let's just you know, kind of give you the Cliff Notes version and, and jump forward. Is that uh, Noah and his wife, singular, and the three sons and the, their three wives, all singular. Uh, and the text is going to make that point explicit. Um, they're going to get on to the boat uh, and they're going to come off the boat. And the point of getting onto the boat is to destroy the wickedness of man. Ma- you know, man was evil. Uh, every intent of his heart was on evil all the day long. Uh, and so the, the, the point was to wipe out all of those who refused to do what was good and right in the eyes of the Lord. Mm-hmm. Um, the problem is it didn't work. They get off the boat. And it picks right back up where it left off, mm-hmm. and uh, the other sons and daughters starts to show up again, uh, and <clears throat> out of this, these sons of daughters come the nations, and the nations are going to be deceived and run by Satan. Mm-hmm. They're going to do what Cain's side was doing, Cain, Cain's descendants were doing, right from the beginning. Mm-hmm. So the multiplying wives is going to continue. The building cities to make your name great is going to continue. In fact, that's the first scene right after the flood. You get to chapter 10, a genealogy, chapter 11. You get the Tower of Babel. What started with one person building a city, now everyone's doing, Mm -hmm. right? Now, why do we say all that? Because there is an interpretation that says that the sons of God are angels. Now, Mm -hmm. um, in Job, the sons of God are angels, Uh, in Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 1, you are sons of the Lord your God. Um, you know, and so Israel was to be sons of God. Uh, and so the, the, the son, uh, you know, image, son language is representation. Right. Um, but the context has to determine who's in view here. Right. And so all the way back in chapter 5, as we said, chapter 5 continues right into chapter 6. This is the, 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 what Adam begot. He translated this as the book of the generations of Adam, what Adam begot. In the day that God created Adam, he, the Lord, made Adam, him, in the likeness of God. And he created them, male and female, and he blessed them um, uh, and uh, named them Adam in the day that they were created. And when Adam lived 130 years, he became a father of a son in his own likeness, according to his image. And so you've got... Adam created in God's image, Seth created in Adam's image, and so forth. Mm -hmm. And then there's other sons and daughters. And so Mm -hmm. what are the other sons and daughters? And so the the text is, 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 you know, identifying, sectioning out a certain genealogy, Adam, Seth, all the way down, Enosh, Enoch, all the way down um, through uh, till you get to Noah. Noah, Okay. And so a good uh, summary statement of what's going on in chapter Chapter 5 is chapter 6. It came about that Adam began to multiply on the face of the, the land, and, and so daughters were born to them. And the, uh, the sons of God saw that the daughters of men were tov. Same thing that happened in the, in the fall. Mm-hmm. Uh, Eve saw that the tree was tov, was good. It's the same construction here. Mm-hmm. And the point is man continues to do what's good and right in their own eyes, mm-hmm. not what's good in the eyes of the Lord. Uh, and so... These uh, sons of God, uh, you know, they see that the daughters uh, of man were good, and they take to themselves wives, whomever they chose. They're doing what's good and right. Wives, plural. In their own eyes, yeah, Yeah. wives, plural. Yeah. Uh, Then the Lord said, my spirit shall not strive with Adam forever. Now, um, the angel view has all kinds of problems, not only with context, not only with uh, Hebrew construction, but even with the wording. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, my spirit shall not strive with angels forever since they aren't flesh. That's not what Mm -hmm. it says. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It is, my spirit shall not strive with Ha'adam, the man, forever because uh, he is flesh. Nevertheless, his days will be 120 years. Um. You know, there's this is the time from the pronouncement until the till the flood. This is mm-hmm. there, there's a limited amount of time. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days and also afterwards. Now, the word Nephilim, and one of the problems that we get into is that, um, you know, because we don't know the Hebrew, we don't know the translations. When we see this Nephilim, and and we go, oh, well, it's the Nephilim. Well, the Nephilim shows up about ten times. This exact you know, word, ha nephilim, the, the nephilim, shows up 10 times in the Old Testament. The next time is in uh, is in uh, Numbers chapter 
uh, 13, verse 33. Then again in Joshua 8, 25, <clears throat> it's transliterated in Numbers 13. It's translated in Joshua 8. And so in Joshua 8, the New American Standard reads, all who fell that day. Well, in the Hebrew, it came about all the Nephilim, all the Nephilim mm-hmm. uh, in that day uh, numbered 12,000. Um, the same thing in Judges chapter 20, verse 46. So all of Benjamin, so it came about all the Nephilim mm-hmm. from Benjamin. The right? fallen ones. All right. the fallen ones from Benjamin. All of uh, Second Kings 25, Jeremiah 39, uh, Jeremiah 50. It, it's 10 times all the way through here. All the other times it's translated. This time, and then in Numbers 13, it's transliterated. Mm-hmm. Okay. So if they were to translate it, not transliterate it, it would be uh, something like the fallen ones were on the earth in those days and also afterwards. In other words, the flood's not going to get them all. Mm-hmm. They're going to show right back up. The 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 fallen ones, the <clears throat> the ones who um, rejected and and later in the story is going to be the, the fallen ones meaning to fall in battle. And mm-hmm. so and fallen so the, ones like Cain. Yeah, like who's, Cain. Whose face nephal, nephilim. That's right. right. And I think that's what, yeah. it's, uh, what it's doing there. Yeah. Uh, and so, <clears throat> so the Nephilim were on the, uh, the earth in those days and also afterwards when God, uh, uh, when the sons of, of God came into the daughters of men and bore to them children. These were mighty men, men of old. They translate it men of renown. Now, where do we get the giants view? Well, um, a couple things. Uh, in Numbers chapter 13, these were they were tall. They were mm-hmm. large people. In the Septuagint, it translates it. Uh, these were gigantos. These were giants. Giants. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is to say, uh, they were men of old men. Uh, they translated men of renown. It's men with a name. Hmm. They had made a name for themselves. They were famous, right? We have context for that. Yeah, big right. shooters, right? Yeah. And and so so this is what the other side's been doing. They were they were trying to make a name for themselves. And the Lord saw that the wickedness of Adam was great on the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was on evil continually. That's hard to interpret that as angels. Mm-hmm. Every intent of angels. No, it's every intent of Adam. This mm-hmm. is used consistently all the way through here. And the Lord was sorry that he made Adam on the earth. And he was, at Sev, he was grieved in his heart. Now, uh, here's great irony here. Back in chapter 5, verse 29, Lamech has a son, names him Noah, which means rest, Mm -hmm. saying, this is the one who will nacham. They translate give us rest, but it's actually comfort. Mm. Uh, Comfort uh, us from our work and from the sorrow of, Of our hands. They translate that toil. All of the same wording is showing up here in 6.6. In other words, the text, uh, the narrator is saying, and and Lamech's words are saying, Noah's the one who will give us rest from the labor of our hands. The irony is Noah doesn't bring rest to mankind. The Lord was not calmed, Mm -hmm. doesn't bring comfort, not calm. Uh, to uh, to mankind, the Lord was not calmed. Hmm. He was sorry, not calmed, that he made man on the earth. Uh, he was sorry for the work of his hands, which formed the man. Hmm. And he was sorrowful, wow. grieved in his heart. That's cool. Uh, and the Lord said, I will blot man uh, whom I've created from the face of the land, from the animals, uh, from man to animals, to creeping things, to birds of the sky, for I am sorry that I made them. I am not calmed that I made them. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Uh, And so there's a contrast between Noah and what everyone else is doing. Why is Noah uh, singled out? Mm -hmm. Um, The flood comes in the last year of um, of Methuselah's life, uh, which is back in 27. And so everyone is wiped out except for Noah the sons of God, the the daughters of men. Everyone's wiped out except for Noah and his wife and his three sons and their three wives. Uh, these uh, these, These are the ones that Noah begot, the generations of Noah. These are the ones Noah brought forth. Noah was a righteous man, blameless in his days or in his time. Noah 
walked with God. Mm, we've seen uh, that before. Just like Enoch walked mm-hmm. with God back in the previous chapter. And so, uh, and we're going to see this in chapter 12. Abram walked with God or walked according to the word of the Lord. And so to walk with God or to walk according to the word of the Lord is to do what's right in his eyes. Uh, and specifically, he's not killing people and he's not taking multiple wives and he's not trying to make his name great. The build, Lord tells him to build, build a boat. A city, yeah. yeah, he's, he's building a boat <laughs> right. for deliverance. He's not building a city to make his name great. Mm-hmm. Which, you know, kind of later becomes significant with Abraham, too. He's walking with God. He's not building a city. Rather, he's a nomad wandering yep. around. Looking yeah. for a city whose builder is God. Yeah. And there's a, yeah. there's a difference, and that's mm-hmm. what the writer of Hebrews is going to point out. And so so all of this is just kind of flowing right along. Right. And, and as you read it as a, a single story, which, again, grammatically, syntactically, uh, vocabulary-wise, it's all, it's all fitting together. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's when we take a passage out of, uh, Jude or Second Peter, and read it back into Genesis that we get ourselves mm-hmm. in some trouble. Trouble, right? And um, and um, so the earth was corrupt in the side in the eyes of the Lord, or in the sight of the Lord, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked on the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, and all the flesh had been corrupted. Uh, and God said to Noah, "The end of all flesh has come upon uh, come before me. The earth is filled with violence because of them. And behold, I am about to destroy." Uh, destroy them with the earth. In other words, I am going to wipe them out. Mm-hmm. Uh, some try to argue that it's not the Lord doing it, but it's very explicitly, behold, I, even I, am the <laughs> one who's going to bring the flood, and I'm going to wipe them off the planet, right? <laughs> Therefore, make for yourself an ark. Um, this ark word is going to show up later in the story, so pay attention to it. Um, it's a little ark. It's a... Um, it's the one that's going to be made. It's a golden one. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, this is a, no, it's a different, uh, oh. this is a, a word, the word for um, what uh, Moses's mother puts him in oh. on the on the Nile. Interesting. Yeah, that's uh, really and, interesting. And uh, he's delivered uh, oh. from the Pharaoh trying to kill all the children and he's well, really placed on yeah. the water and he floats down the water and he comes to the dry land and he's delivered. It's all the same. Wow, that's cool. Same language. And, uh, and so <clears throat> anyway, Make for yourself an ark, ark of gopher wood and pitch, and it, you know it, it tells the the uh, you know the the size uh, three hundred cubits. We're not familiar with a cubit. A cubit is really the size, of basically your elbow to the tip of your finger. I think that's what it is. You know, but that's not particularly helpful because you know you know Shaquille O'Neal's cubit <laughs> is a little bigger than uh, you know some little guys, but that's but you know about eighteen inches, right? Is mm-hmm. about what they what they say and. And so that would make it about 450 feet uh, long and, uh, and uh, oh, 30 feet, uh, you know, 50 feet, uh, 75 feet wide and about 45 feet tall. So, so that's the, the size we're looking at. Make a window, cover it with uh, pitch, have, uh, you know, second deck, third deck. Uh, and behold, I'm bringing the flood. Behold, I, even I, that, there it is in yeah. verse 17, am bringing flood water up on the earth to destroy all flesh which has the breath of life in it. Uh, uh, from under heaven, everything that is on the earth shall perish. I don't know how you make that more explicit mm-hmm. than the Lord is doing this. But I shall establish my covenant with you, and you shall enter the ark, you and your sons and your wife uh, and your son's wives with you. Now, it's not explicit the number there, but we're going to get uh, the explicit number in chapter 7, verse 13. Uh, on that very same day, Noah and Shem, and Ham, and Japheth, the sons of Noah, and the and Noah's wife, singular, and the three wives of his sons mm-hmm. with them, mm-hmm. right? One for each <laughs> entered into the ark. And so... That's rare in so, that time. So there's a... Yeah, <laughs> right. so it's making it spe- uh, 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 specific or right. explicit mm-hmm. uh, that this is not multiplying wives, plural, not taking multiple wives. Uh, and we're going to run into this. Um, you know, um, You know, kings are going to take multiple wives and and the patriarch's going to take multiple wives, and it's, it's going to be a, be a problem. Mm-hmm. It's, it just shows that they're not doing what's good and right in the eyes of the Lord. And so mm-hmm. continue to keep the literary uh, context going. Uh, and so the Lord's going to establish his covenant with Noah, uh, but he's going to wipe out every living thing. And so there's instruction given uh, to take, uh, you know, two by two, um, get on to the, uh, to the ark, um, and uh, and so so that's uh, the instruction. So uh, 
Then the Lord said to Noah, enter the ark. This is in 7.1. You and all your household, uh, for you I have seen to be righteous before me all this time. Maybe we should point out here, there's a common belief, and I think it comes from our kind of the way we share the gospel, is we say, there's none righteous, not one. See, that's what Paul said. There's none righteous, mm-hmm. not one. I do this in my classes. You, I'm sure you've heard this. Yeah, Alex. right. Um, and I ask the class, is that true? And they go, oh, yeah, yeah, that's true. And then someone will say, oh, well, no, Jesus was righteous. And I say, is that it? They go, yep, yeah, that's it. Jesus. And they all agree. Yeah, yeah, Jesus. Well, um, in Romans chapter 4, Paul makes the point. He argues the point that Abraham was righteous by faith. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and when you start to think about it, there's all kinds of people in the Old Testament that were righteous. Mm-hmm. There, in fact, the the very Psalms that Paul quotes in chapter three, if you go back and read those Psalms, chapter, you know, Psalm ten, five, fourteen, and so forth, they all have righteous people in them. In fact, righteous generations mm-hmm. in them. Uh, and so, uh, you are righteous by doing what's right in the eyes of the Lord. Uh, by operating by revelation. This is what Noah's doing. So he's not righteous because he was a really good boy mm. or did, never did anything wrong, but he's righteous because he valued the word of the Lord. He walked according to the word of the Lord and mm-hmm. did what was right in the eyes of the Lord. And so <clears throat> seven two, you shall take with you every clean animal by sevens, male and female, and the animals which are not clean, two by two. Well, the the... The question then becomes, well, how does he know this since the clean and the unclean have not been revealed yet? Remember what this story is doing. Mm-hmm. This story is being told to people who already know what clean and unclean animals are. Right. Um, it, it, it's being uh, being told to people who are in covenant with the Lord who are about to enter into the land. Mm-hmm. And, and so this story provides the backdrop for why they are to do what they're to do. What animals are clean and unclean? Well, you know, they, right. they know that, but this right. is this is the kind of the base story. Right. Uh, and so the things that happen in the narrative are going to get codified into the law. They're going to uh, be, this is why we do what we do. The Lord has identified clean animals and unclean animals, and this is why we do what we do. More upon uh, about that later. You know, Moses is going to say, hold on to that, hold your questions, <laughs> we'll get to it, yeah. right? <laughs> right. Um, That's good. Uh, and so... Um, Birds of the sky and uh, and all of that. Uh, for for after seven more days, I will send rain on the earth for forty days and forty nights, and I will blot out from the face of the land. There's the eye where I will blot out uh, every living thing that I have made. You can't say the Lord didn't make it because He says I made it, and you can't say the Lord didn't blot it out because He says I will blot it out. <laughs> right. uh, and so. Uh, and Noah did according to all that the Lord had commanded him. Now, Noah was 600 years old when the flood of, uh, of water came upon the earth. Uh, then Noah and his sons and his wife's sons, they all entered the ark because of the water of the flood. Every clean animal um, uh, and animals that were not clean, the birds and everything that creeps on the ground, uh, there, uh, there went into the uh, ark, uh, two by twos, male and female, as God had commanded them. And it came about that after seven days, the, the flood of the water came upon the earth. And so, so you'll get this throughout the, um, uh, the Lord will give someone instruction mm-hmm. and then it will be repeated. And they did exactly according to the word of the Lord, or they didn't, yeah. Yeah. right? And, and you're supposed to compare what the Lord said with what they did. Did, did they follow the instructions and, or did they not? And, uh, and so Noah has followed the instructions. So next time we'll pick it up in chapter 7. Verse eleven, mm-hmm. uh, when the flood uh, begins, uh, and uh, and we'll talk about uh, them getting off the boat next yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. So, so recap: we've watched these sides yep. kind of developing, and we watched as as the sons of God, so to speak, the 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 sons of Adam. Uh, this team is developing, and then they, they the, all join the wrong side. Yeah, the carriers of the promise, right. are all going along. Uh, and they are all led astray, and they're doing what's good and mm-hmm. right in their eyes. But Noah. Yeah, but Noah right. did right in the eyes of the Lord. Right. Uh, and this is going to be the enticement all the way through this story. Uh, so, you know, again, the, the nations are going to be fruitful and multiply, and, and they're going to, you know, be working on Satan's team. And, and the Lord's going to instruct Israel to go wipe out uh, the ites, mm-hmm. just like he has done here in the flood. Mm-hmm. Uh, don't intermarry with them. Uh, you know, don't take their sons or daughters because they will cause you to follow their gods. And then the 
anger of the Lord will burn against you and mm-hmm. he'll wipe you off the mm-hmm. face of the planet, you know. Mm-hmm. And so that's going to be Deuteronomy chapter 7. Yeah. And so we're going to see what we're seeing in this story early. We're going to continue to see over right. and over right. and over. Right. And this, again, you know, this makes a lot of sense out of what we've been talking about in Genesis 3, 15 and 16 yep. and 4, 7, as these two teams are developing, these two desires, this is all playing out, which yep. really helps to validate um, what was happening in those yep. earlier scenes. And so, That's exactly right. Um, and so we're going to keep tracing that. We're going to keep tracing those two sides and see how it plays out through the entire story, not just in Genesis, yep. but in the entire Old Testament. And so, uh, so we'll pick up next week, like you said, and... Uh, Uh, Chapter 7, verse 11. We'll see you then. Thanks for listening to Teach Me the Bible podcast. Our desire is to use the power of God's Word to change lives. For more information, download our app. Join us next week for another episode of Teach Me the Bible.